Welcome to the Careers by Jen podcast, episode 288. On this episode of the podcast, Jen talks about doing what you need to do, not what you should. Yeah, and just forget altogether about whatever it is you want to do. You're not here to enjoy yourself. Hey, I'm Jen Swanson, and Careers by Jen is where I help you to get the job, love your work, and advance your career, and I talk about wellness and success topics, too. This podcast is actually ending production after episode 300. However, you can find me over at Careers by Jen on YouTube, where I will be continuing to share career tips, advice, wellness, and success topics, and much, much more. It's been a 10-year run here on Careers by Jen on the podcast, and until we are at episode 300, I invite you to continue listening, go back and listen to the archives, and please enjoy this show. Thank you so much for being here. Have you heard the expression, stop shooting yourself? (laughs) I like it. I tell myself all the time, I should do this, I should do that. But once upon a time, someone told me that anytime there is a should in the sentence, it means you are living up to someone else's expectations. Maybe it's your boss. Maybe it's your family's expectations. Maybe it's society's expectation. Maybe it's someone else's expectation, desire, or need that is being prioritized over your own. If you resonate with any of this, stick around because I have a little bit more to say on the subject. I'm Jen. Welcome to this podcast. I so very much appreciate you tuning in today. Thank you for being here. This podcast is recorded on the unceded and traditional territory of the Coast Salish people, including the Keitsi, the Kwantlen, the Stolo, and the Coquitlam First Nations. One quick note before we dive into our topic of the day, registration for my live class happening February 23rd, 2021 at 4 p.m. Pacific or 7 p.m. Eastern is open now. The class is free and it's on the topic of finding calm amidst the stress and the chaos of our time. And if you would like to join in, please register so that you can get the link by going either to my Instagram bio. My Instagram is at Careers by Jen. And if you click the link in the bio, you'll see register for the Huddle Live class in the link. Um, You can also find it in the description link to this podcast over on YouTube. The uh, podcast in audio format is always published on YouTube and down in the description box, you'll find the link to the live class, or you can go directly to eventbrite.com and search Huddle Journeys, H-U-D-D-O-L Journeys, and you will see my class and a few of the other ones that are listed there too. And all of these live classes are free, and I think there are several coming up this month. So take a look at that. I look forward to seeing you in the live class if you can join me. Are you shooting yourself? (laughs) Sounds, uh uh-huh. Do you hear yourself saying, I should do blank, fill in the blank, multiple times a day? Now, of course, there are some things that you absolutely should do. (laughs) There are some things that you need to do. Uh, and and these, uh, you know, can include ethical things, moral things. There are some things that, yes, you should do. There are some things that, yes, you need to do. And then there are things that you want to do also. And my question to you today is how much of what you are doing is what you actually want to be doing? You can apply this question broadly to your career You can apply it broadly to your life, or you can narrow it down and apply it to how you are using your time, your downtime at home, or even your focused time at work. How are you using it? Is what what you are doing right now something that you should do, that you need to do, that you must do, which is probably the same thing, um, or is it something that you want to do? Now, we all have to do 
things we don't want to do. I don't like doing the statistics report for the church that I have to do for the national church every year. Um, Lots of people help with it, but it's just this great big boring tangle of paperwork, yuck, that I just really don't want to do, but I have to do it. I must do it. It's part of my job. I have to do it. Um, so, So there are things like that that you absolutely have to do. You have to pay your bills. You have to, you know, there are things that we have to do. But there are some things that you maybe don't have to do, but are doing anyway. And so this is just a a chance to, to throw some questions at you today, to get you thinking a little bit about how you actually spend your time. One of the things that this COVID-19 pandemic has taught me is that things can change entirely in an instant. One minute we're all living our lives and the next we're locked down trying to figure out how to log into this thing called Zoom (laughs) and how to reimagine doing everything, including visiting friends and family on a screen. It's been so strange. It's been so strange. And, um, and there are varying degrees of, of how that's affected people across the globe, right? Um, but, but the one thing that's come out of it for me is that nothing is guaranteed. Our work is not guaranteed. Our health is not guaranteed. Um, this virus has no, um, no discrimination as far as who it affects and as far as, um, uh, as far as who is who can catch it, <laughs> right? There certainly uh, can be an argument said for uh, other kinds of discrimination around what happens with the, the care of people and, and the vaccines and all the rest of it. But as far as who catches it, um, the virus doesn't care. It'll infect any warm body. Um, and, and nothing is guaranteed as far as our community goes and who we have around us and, and uh, who we call on for support in hard times. So it's all precious and it's tenuous in many ways. And as the old cliche goes, life is short. It's too short. Life is too short to be doing the majority of what we do under the I should umbrella. So how much of what you are doing in your career or in your personal time is not stuff you actually even want to be doing? How much of what you do do you have control over, I wonder? Are there things that you can let go of that are not serving you anymore? What can you outsource so that you have more time to do the things that you want to do? I was listening to someone who was starting a business and she was talking about having small children at home and her husband was working full time and trying to help her on the side with this business. And she talked about uh, feeling the pressure and the stress of having to do everything. And they decided, and they decided when they didn't have a whole lot of extra cash to make the decision, but they decided to give up some things so that they could hire a person to come in every couple of weeks and do a deep clean of their house. And that was one thing that they were able to outsource. And eventually the business grew and then it wasn't so difficult to be able to afford to do that. But at the beginning, it was a really hard choice to decide, you know, I don't have time, you know, I'd rather spend my time playing with my children than, you know, scrubbing a toilet or <laughs> or whatever. So is there something you can outsource? Are you in a position where you could outsource something so that you could have more time to do the kinds of things that you want to do instead of the I shoulds, like mowing the lawn or um, or whatever it might happen to be? Let's put it another way. If money wasn't a consideration, what would you be doing right now? If, if you uh, didn't have to worry about that, what would you be doing right now? What would you want to be doing right now? What would your purpose be? What kinds of things could you do to fulfill that if you didn't have to think about paying the bills and, uh, and worry about all of that? 
Now, I know that many, probably not all, but many of my listeners here on the podcast and the viewers on the YouTube channel are close to, if not already, 40 years old or older. And again, that might not be true, um, but but looking at the statistics and the analytics and everything that I have access to and the people that write to me and, and message me, um, most of you have been working for some time. Some are still raising children. Others have been striving for a particular role at work or a career goal or an amazing trip or a certain kind of home or car. Like we all have our why, our reasons for why we do what we do. And if you are younger, I'm glad you're listening too. And hopefully this is helpful for you as well to be thinking about for the future. But especially if you are in that 40 years old and up category, when was the last time that you took some time to re-examine your why? Some dedicated set time to just think about it without any distractions. You know, why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you doing what you're doing for work? And or why are you doing what you're doing for your fun time, for your play time? How are you uh, managing all of that, I wonder? And this is not the same thing necessarily as goal setting. That can come later. But, but this is deeper than that. This is what is your why? Simon Sinek, if you don't know who Simon Sinek is, look him up. He is uh, phenomenal and he did a TED talk a number of years ago, a number of years ago now on finding your why and it's brilliant and it still holds. <laughs> so check that out. And he is a prolific uh, writer. He, he puts something out on LinkedIn almost every day. He's just an amazing person. So um, he, he said, start with your why, I think is the name of the TED talk. Start with your why. What is your why? Why are you doing this? Was it because you didn't know what to do after school and somebody said, why don't you go be a blah? And so you said, oh, okay. And off you went and became a blah. But it was never something you were really passionate about, called to do, excited about, but you did it because it was somebody else's suggestion, right? Nothing wrong with that, but it happens to a lot of people. Now, what is your why? Are you, are you still doing what you started off doing as somebody else's suggestion, are you still doing it because you want to do it, because you've been doing it for so many years? Um, and and I, what, I'm, what I'm doing is not suggesting that you throw everything out and start over again. <laughs> I'm just saying it's good to have a little self-examination once in a while, right? Um, I'm asking a lot of questions today, so this is a little bit different, I know. But here's another set of questions. This is another way to get at the same question. What about your current life, work, fill in the blank here? What about your current blank is life giving? And what about your current blank is life draining? These are good journal questions if you're prone to journaling. What about your current blank, so work or life, is life giving? And what about your current blank? is life draining? And which out of all of the parts involved do you have any control over? Because certainly there are some things over which we have no or very little control. I completely understand. I completely get it. And there are some situations that would be impossible to change for all sorts of reasons. Maybe the entire situation doesn't need to be changed, as I said before, but maybe how you do something could be changed to make the whole thing a little more life-giving. Sometimes you just have to tweak your life a little bit, tweak your career a little bit, so that everything else gets a renewed spark, so that you're able to uh, enjoy it again and feel good about it again. One of the most common things that holds us back is fear, fear of the unknown. I know that I like to know what's going to happen before I make a big decision. And the truth is, most of the time, I don't know. I can't know what's going to happen. I can guess, I can imagine, but every detail is not in place because I can't see into the future. 
I started working at the hospital when I was 19 years old. I pretty much grew up there. The hospital staff threw me my wedding and baby showers, and I went back to school a few times over the years for many things, but I was always still working in some capacity at the hospital. I moved around to almost every different department that there was as my children grew and life changed, because the beautiful thing about working in a hospital situation like that is you can find the four-hour Monday to Friday shifts so that you can drop kids off at school, go to work, and then go pick them up and come home and still have been, you know, doing half time hours in a week. Or you can work, uh, you know, evening shift while your husband's home with the kids in the day or whatever. Like there's lots and lots of opportunity in the hospital world because it runs 24 hours. There's always a shift <laughs> that works out. And so I moved around to every department and I worked part time sometimes and full time other times. But the one constant was that I was employed there in some capacity. And I was employed there for 23 years. Well, by the time I had decided to go back to school yet again, um, I started taking one course at a time at the university, which was quite a ways away and not easy to get to. Um, but I would take, I'd take one course at a time while I was working and teaching and being a mom. Um, I was listed only as on call as a casual employee at that point. Um, and they would occasionally, they would phone me all the time, but most of the time I would say no, because I was toward the top of the seniority list by this point. But occasionally I would say yes and take a shift. Um, it was my backup, right? The hospital was my default. It was my stability. It was, it had always been there my almost entire working life. But finally, in 2012 or so, it was time to make a decision because I hadn't actually worked there more than a few times a year that year. And I, because I was in a master's program at that time, I was working at a church as a children and youth student minister. I was teaching at a college. It was just too many things. And they phoned me all the time to come in and work. And I had to say no all the time. And it was time to let it go. And I agonized over the, de the decision. Because again, it was my security. I was afraid to let that go because it was a lot of years of seniority, right? Top of the list. But I remember Scott asking me this question. He said, when the phone rings and it's the hospital offering you a shift and you say yes, is it life-giving or is it life-draining to go in? And I, I sat with that question. It wasn't a hard answer. Because by then it was nerve wracking to say yes, because I was doing it so very rarely and things in medicine changed so quickly that I was terrified every time I actually had to go in, even though I'd been there for more than 20 years and I taught the program, but having to work in a fast paced, stressful environment with people's lives on the line and not making any mistakes, it wasn't a hard decision to say that it's rather life draining to uh, to do it when I do it so rarely. So it was time to let it go and to actually resign. Now you might be thinking, well, you didn't need it. You had other work, whatever. Yes, right? I had that luxury of, ab of not absolutely needing it to survive at that point. But it was still, there was still the fear, the fear of what if, what if something happens? What if I don't finish my degree or I fail or whatever, or, you know, and I need to go back to work at the hospital and now I have to start at the bottom again. There's lots of fear in that. To everything, there is a season, to quote a well-known passage from Ecclesiastes. And my season as a health unit coordinator, health unit clerk was over. And my season as a pastor was just beginning. So I really think there are seasons Wow. The, the, the staying in one job for 35 years uh, is really rare <laughs> nowadays. And it doesn't have to be that way unless you want it to be. And if you want it to be that way, fantastic. But if you don't, maybe you're in a season. And if so, what season are you in? And maybe there's a better question. What part of this particular season are you in? Are you just starting? Are you in the middle? Are you in the waning of the season? You may be in the middle and quite satisfied and happy, and if so, that is wonderful. Or you may be coming toward the end of a season and feeling a little bored and a little 
curious and wondering what the next season might be. What, what new season or adventure might you be entering into? You might be at the very, very beginning of a new season with all its excitement and hard work and, and opportunity, which is where I feel like I am at with the YouTube channel. I feel like the podcast is coming to the end of its season of 10 years, and I am moving in into the beginnings of this new and exciting adventure of producing content on YouTube and I'm learning and I'm making mistakes and I'm experimenting and I'm feeling like there's so much I don't know yet. Trying to learn how to edit video. My goodness, I never thought I'd be doing that. But but it's a new season. So what season are you in? And this brings me back to the idea that whenever you say should, you might just be working under someone else's agenda. Now, maybe not. But chances are, you are working under someone else's agenda. And so what I'm offering you today in this reflective musing is an invitation to dig in a little bit and to ask, where did this particular expectation come from? Am I doing this, whatever this happens to be, again, fill in the blank, am I doing this? It could even be as small as a task. Am I doing this task? Um, Am I doing this task because I have to, which sometimes is absolutely true? Am I doing this task because I should? Then you can ask yourself, according to whom? (laughs) Or am I doing this task because it lights me up and because I want to? And when when you answer that, maybe the want to is because you have a further thing that you're trying to get to. And so by doing this particular task, it advances you closer to the thing that you're really looking for in the future. Um, so, so am I doing this because I have to, whatever this happens to be? Am I doing this because I should? And if it's a should, a should according to whom? Or am I doing this because it's life-giving and because I want to and because it brings me joy? Well, thank you for listening, my friend. Take good care of you and we will talk to you on the Careers by Jen podcast next time. You've been listening to Careers by Jen with Jen Swanson. If you like what you heard, please share this. You know, if every single person listening today shared this episode with just one friend, our audience would be twice as big just like that. And the more people we can help with our content, the better. So help out a friend and help grow our audience by sharing this show with someone you know who would benefit from the content. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that, and together we can make a difference. Until next time, take good care.